Hey everybody, this is my 55 gallon T-bar tank and I'm in the middle of a water change right now. I'm not going to do a long drawn out video here. We're still actually draining the water at the moment. But when I got in there and started doing stuff, stuck my hands in the water and got the gravel vac down in there. I'm trying to get some of that pleco poop out of this tank. The water felt like bath water. I mean warm water. I was really surprised at how warm it felt. And so I went over and I got my um, infrared thermometer and I took a temperature of the surface of the tank and it was 88.7 degrees. So I'm not sure what's going on with my heater there in the back. It was on, indicating that it was still trying to heat the tank even at that temperature. And so I adjusted it back. It seemed like it had been, been adjusted up. And I did mess with it recently. It was a while ago, though. I think I would have noticed a 90-degree tank between now and the time I had messed with it. But maybe I bumped it up more than I thought. I don't know. I find it hard to believe that it, this tank has been that warm for all this time without me noticing it. But I sure noticed it today. So I adjusted the uh, heater back down. Uh, the, the light went off as I turned it down, so apparently it's not just stuck on. And I adjusted it to where it says 78 degrees. You can't really go by that. You just kind of adjust it to where the tank's the right temperature and leave it sit uh, wherever it says it sits. If it says 78, but the tank is really 81, then leave it set at 78 if 81 is where you want it. So what I'm going to do is leave it where it is. I'm going to do a water change like normal, except I'm not going to do a huge water change because I don't want to shock the temperature in the tank too much. But I am going to bring the temperature down to about 78 to 80 degrees, which is about where I like to keep my tanks. And we're going to see if that heater uh, is not having some kind of fault or if I really just bumped it up way more than I thought. So consider this the first part of the video. We'll come back later this evening and we'll give the tank some time to sit and come up to temperature and see what that thermometer is doing. So I'll see you in a little while. Well, there's my synodontist swimming around there for a brief moment. All right, be back in a couple of hours. All right, so here we are about four hours later. And I just checked the tank temperature. We're down to 84 degrees. I checked a little while ago. It was at 84.4. So we are still coming down in temperature. I actually didn't test the water after my water change. I meant to do it, but I've been doing a lot of water changes uh, in the fish room here this afternoon. So I've just been going from tank to tank and I never got back to uh, checking the water temperature. Uh, I did check the dissolved solids and I checked the nitrates afterwards, but I did not check the actual water temperature afterwards. So I don't know how much I reduced it immediately, but we've come down almost five degrees or about five degrees total uh, now in about the last four hours or so. And I've been watching uh, every time I come in the room, I've been checking the heater and I've got the little light facing outward. It was on before. It's not now. And, of course, I've dialed it back. So I'm inclined to believe that the heater is working just fine. I've given it more thought. I do remember the last time I was in there doing a water change, I thought the tank temperature was a little chilly. And I couldn't get the, I couldn't read the numbers on the thermometer so or the, the heater in there. So I didn't really know where I was putting it to. And I must have really jacked it up and ramped it up to almost 90 degrees where we were at 88.7 or something like that and as i said the red light was on at that temperature it was still trying to heat the tank uh at nearly 89 degrees so that's got me thinking you know i've talked before about having um proper water circulation and whether or not we really need to have surface agitation for aeration and that sort of thing so i would never do this as an experiment but i've made mistakes in the past that have allowed us to see what happens under certain circumstances like i forgot to turn my filter back on uh in some tanks and it's been days before i've noticed and because i have big power heads in most of my tank and certainly in my larger tanks i keep an additional power head in there that circulation 
is usually enough, at least for the nitrogen cycle. It keeps the water circulating around the tank and that keeps the nitrogen cycle going. In this case, however, you can run into real danger from oxygen deprivation in tanks with really warm water in it. Anything over about 83 degrees Fahrenheit is water temperature that I would recommend running an air stone. Whenever I'm doing a treatment on a tank for ick or something and I've got to do a heat treatment, it's an absolute must to have an air stone in the tank because you've got to run it up to about 89 degrees. So here I just inadvertently ran it up to that temperature and apparently it was on the last water change I did in this tank. So it's been at least a week maybe. I've been trying to stay on top of the water changes in this tank a little more frequently and the bottom wasn't real dirty so it hasn't been that long but it's been days. It's been probably a week at least since I did a water change and yet no fish in this tank died. No fish in this tank has shown signs of distress when I turn the lights on in the morning. The time that the oxygen levels are going to be the lowest that they're going to be. The plants produce oxygen all day while the lights are shining on them, but at night they actually use oxygen. So uh, first thing in the morning when your lights first come on is your lowest oxygen levels of the day. As soon as those plants begin photosynthesizing for the day, they begin putting oxygen back in the water and you begin building oxygen up throughout the day. And then of course, as soon as the lights go out, the plants begin using the oxygen up out of the water and the more heavily planted your tank is the more rapidly the oxygen gets pulled back out of the water so having good circulation is still important even if you've got a nice heavily planted tank in some cases you might say it's even more important in a heavily planted tank yet I just ran my temperature up to 89 degrees and the only thing I have in the way of surface agitation is that my spray bar is angled upwards and that's it that's the amount of surface agitation I don't like bubbles in a tank so I don't use an air stone unless I really feel that I need one again and when I'm treating the tank for something this was a mistake I would have never done this I never would have run a tank up to 90 degrees almost without putting an air stone in it I'm gonna have to slide the light back a little bit as we open it up so that's it that's how much water you can just about make out back there it makes little we'll call them little mounds of water where each individual little port is shooting straight upwards and creating a little bit of a here I can lift this up better than this So that's it. That's the extent of my surface agitation. In this tank. And everybody in there did just fine. As I was saying, even first thing in the morning when the oxygen levels are at their absolute lowest. I still saw no signs of distress. I saw no fish near the surface. I saw nobody gasping, you know, uh, you know, flapping their gills heavily. Again, the, the fish near the surface is always going to be a key sign that something is wrong. Now, obviously, I've got these fish that are always near the surface, but even the guppies are not up near the surface in the, you know, first thing in the morning when the lights come on. Everybody's just doing their thing and acting perfectly normal. So until I actually stuck my hand in the water today, I did not realize how warm this tank has been. And so again, this is just another one of these stupid mistakes I've made. Uh, I'm sure I must have turned that heater up and thought, you know what, I'll need to come back in a couple hours and check and see, you know, how warm the tank's getting. And if it's still getting too warm, I can always adjust it back and I can sort of fine tune it from that point. And I probably just walked away and, and promptly forgot about it. And the heater just kept heating the tank and heating the tank. And I ran it up to 89 degrees. And yet I didn't suffer a single loss nor did we see any distress by any fish. I find that very, very surprising with considering the, you know, limited 
surface agitation I have. So make what you want of that. I don't know, you know, that's just what it is. I'm not saying that to, to tell you you don't need the surface agitation or the bubbles or the air stones. Again, I personally would never have done this. I don't recommend it. If you're going to take your tank temperature above 83 degrees Fahrenheit, I would really recommend having an air stone in the tank. So I got lucky. I've said before that I deliberately set my tanks up. I sort of Dan proof them. I know I do stuff like this all the time. I know I forget about things. I know I have the best intentions to come back and check on that later and don't. I know I intend to do a water change and I never get around to it and four, five, six, eight days goes by before I finally get to the water change. I have to have fish and tanks that can handle that kind of lax maintenance, you know, and, and frequent oversights where I forget to turn heaters back down or I forget to turn filters back on. That stuff happens, you know, it happens to everybody, but I'm not going to uh, lie and say it doesn't happen to me probably a little more frequently than it happens to most people. I'm, I'm kind of absent-minded and forgetful when it comes to a lot of stuff. So I sort of set my tanks up for that purpose so that they're a little bit flexible and they can sort of withstand being bounced around a little bit. Again, I never would have done this deliberately uh, and I'm really, you know, glad I was able to catch it and get everything back into line. So hopefully as the evening progresses, I will remember once again to come back in here and double check. I don't want to, you know, drop the temperature down to room temperature. I want it to stay... Uh, you know, somewhat tropical temperatures. I want to stay between 78 and 80 in here, but that's it. I don't want it above 80. 80 is usually pretty much my upper limit of how much I want my tanks to be uh, heated unless I got something specific going on. So there you go, everybody. Again, make what you want out of that. I don't know what else to say about it other than make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss anything. Uh, thanks again for watching this one. Don't forget, this is my T-Bar tank, and I'll see you real soon in the next one. Thanks again.